is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seen me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. Um, I saw in the news this week that Alex Jones has been found liable again when it comes to the uh, false um, and quite harmful statements that he was alleged to have uh, said on his InfoWars um, channel and also or InfoWars site and also another um, site which um, uh, speed up freedom speak or, or something it's, it's something like that I, I think I'll try and find out the name of it and put it up here somewhere in my usual section but um, he's been found liable uh, financially liable for things that he has said about the Sandy Hook shooting namely that it was a hoax and that they were all actors and that it didn't actually happen and the families of um, victims have actually been suing him um, pretty much non-stop since the Sandy Hook shooting um, occurred and well, since he started propagandizing it on uh, Infowars. And he has lost cases and been found liable that I'm aware of in Texas, also in Wisconsin, and now in California. And um, the California judge um, is has now set a, um, ju a jury hearing uh, for I think it's um early December oh no, no I think it might be early January to be able to determine damages I have a feeling the damages are going to be extortionate and um, that's not a bad thing um, Alex Jones has immediately after that the the, the ruling um, gone back onto Infowars and made all of these rowdy claims that he was not given a fair trial and that he should have had a trial by jury and things like that and his supporters are sort of believing him and echo chambering all of that message. But the facts of the case, from what I understand, is that the reason why he was held liable is not because of there being a lack of process. It's because he failed to participate in the process. He refused to participate in the process. The, um, the families that were suing him were seeking discovery of documents and uh, which is the very first thing that happens in a case is the exchange of the documents and they had filed petitions to say that he was um, failing to pro or refusing to produce documents that evidenced what, whether or not he was making a profit from the things he was saying such as you know the Sandy Hook shooting was a, a hoax and um, he was ordered by the court to produce the evidence of whether or not this was imp improving his ratings or bringing him a greater profit and he refused to provide it. It was on the basis of refusing to participate in court proceedings that um, caused the judge to find against him because he defaulted. So he was given the right to participate in a process. He just chose not to participate. And as it happens, um, this is what he had done in previous cases as well, because I'm assuming that um, if he were to produce these documents, they would evidence that it was profitable for him to be able to make up stories because then he would get bigger ratings, he may get more uh, financial injection into the channel by whatever means, whether it's um, by views and monetization, whether it's by direct contributions from people, whether it's through advertising, I don't know how he gets his, his income. And uh, he didn't want to have to demonstrate that because then it kind of proves the point of the case. So instead, um, he's faulted and so a default judgment has been made against him. I think this is a really interesting um, case because um, what it does is it allows individuals who have been defamed or who have a case to bring against any um, media type organization that links directly to the profitability of that organization. So I wanted to do a full reading on Alex Jones on the outcome of this hearing and um, whether or not there's a, a relationship and any impact that, that rever rever reverberations that can be felt in terms of some of those propagandas such as um, Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson and um, you know others at Fox News and at Newsmax and OAN and other places where they tend to make a point of raising the temperature by making very extreme claims 
and uh, they do that to be able to it's like clickbait they do it to be able to make a um an improved profit so it's for profitability i've just had a card pop out okay i've had the chariot pop out which is about um mediation negotiation and um moving forward with rapid speed let's just keep that in mind and uh, see whether or not uh, whether or not it's relevant so let's just do a reading on this outcome when it comes to Alex Jones and whether or not it's going to have a significant bearing on other media outlets that distort information in order to um, raise profits. I think that um, what it does seem to provide a case for is for, let's just say Tucker Carlson, for example. You know, Tucker Carlson has reasonably high rating or very high ratings. And would he be willing to produce would Fox News be willing to produce, or the Fox Corporation, be willing to produce documentary evidence to demonstrate how each individual show where there's been propaganda or false accusations made, or misleading accusations, especially slanderous ones, whether or not those um, link to particularly high episodes of viewership, which then of course, you know, improves advertising revenue and all sorts of things yeah i think that this is um, something to watch out for so let's have a look at the whole energy around this so we're looking at it from alex jones but i think we're just going to look at it from these media uh, using alex jones as an example but looking at it from the perspective of these media outlets okay now oh, here we go so we've got the Queen of Wands in reverse. That's a very interesting uh, beginning there. The signifier and the challenge card. <laughs> Conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts. Very interesting. The past. Hmm. And the short term future. So we, as a signifier, we've got the Queen of Wands, and it's challenged by the Eight of Swords. Uh, so the Queen of Wands in reverse, and it's challenged by the Eight of Swords in reverse. The Queen of Wands in reverse is about rivalry um, and uh, jealousy. It's it's about um, an entity that is willing to infect and um, destroy and and sicken something in order to avoid sharing it with someone else. It's a really nasty um feverish type of rivalry that is willing to destroy rather than give up and it's very interesting that um this is the the signifier for this entire reading because the whole point of you know the alex jones style propaganda and slander that has been accused um, and that has gone through the court system is about a repeated attempt to just make these people have lost their children in, or have lost their family members in a horrendous shooting which is all already so traumatic far more traumatic than any individual any family should have to deal with and not only have they done that but they've been on the receiving end of death threats and stalking and harassment for years as a result of the harmful um slanderous comments masquerading as fact that they claim has come out of um, Alex Jones's mouth and his um, media outlets such as Infowars and that's exactly what this card is all about it's about being willing to destroy good things in order because you're you don't want your need for your desire for riches and to be prosperous is just sick and you're willing to destroy things around you in order to get it. And that is what is represented in this card. So I know the cards are listening. It's challenged by the Eight of Swords in reverse. And this is about 
a creating a new future and a new version of yourself, a new version of the future. It can also be about rewarding hard work and finding a way forward. But I think um, that what it means in this particular instance is, is about um, the question that I pose, which is the impact. What is the impact on the media, on, on media outlets and just um, information, publicly available information in general, uh, based on these findings against Alex Jones and Infowars? And this would indicate that there is a challenge to that feverish, rivalrous, sickened behavior of, of wanting to destroy rather than share with others, wanting to destroy rather than be second best. So, you know, profit at all cost kind of things and, and be damned even if you are um, already suffering. I'm happy to make you suffer even more in order for me to make a few dollars, basically. It's just, just nasty. Um, it looks as though this is a challenge to that, as though it's a working of a something different in the future. So let's just see how that transpires, and then I'll be able to find the right context for that. Um, on the conscious level, we've got this um, um, Seven of, of Cups, which is all about that fantasy illusion delusion type of card. This is um, all of the nonsense that's traveling around on the surface, and um, uh, it's the disinformation, it's the slander. And that is what appears in the conscious. On the subconscious level, it's really interesting because we've got the Ace of Swords. And the Ace of Swords is the ultimate when it comes to truth and communication. And um, I find that to be a very interesting mix. These cards are definitely listening, but it looks as though the reading is complex. So I want to make sure before I uh, jump to any conclusions here with when it comes to the reading that I actually have put all the cards down. But we do have here a juggle between truth and disinformation and what lies beneath is the truth so the truth and the facts and the way things really are is what's at the heart of this reading and um, the second the sickening behavior of um, wanting to destroy people actively destroying people and their reputations in order to make a dollar um, with this disinformation and slander is what is challenging this truth but it looks as though there's something that's going to be prevailing here or at least is is knocking against that behavior and I'm hoping that this turns out to be a positive change in the future let's keep going so in the past we've got the world in reverse and this is about accomplishment and completion of a task but it's very mediocre it can also be about an overdue birth a delay moving forward something like that and I think that what this might represent is is, you know, the covering of one's ears and just saying, um, yes, I know we're surrounded by all of this, but um, when, we'll do something about it tomorrow. We'll do something about it tomorrow. We'll do something about it tomorrow. Okay. And I think that's what it is. This is about not having, being really mediocre in the response, not having really taken the threat seriously, that, um, that the whole existence of a country and its perceptions of truth and fact can be destroyed by this type of behavior and in the past there's been a delay and a very mediocre response to it and I think that's what this card represents. In the short term future we have an interesting card because this is about an unexpected turn of events. It's also about having a new perspective and, and kind of being reluctant about it, it and also self-restrictive in a way. So. But it's interesting, we've got that unexpected turn of events. Now this is the short term future, which can also in my readings be a snapshot of today or just you know the immediate past, which is you know a day or so. This could be about the Alex Jones case and the fact that as an unexpected turn of events, it could put into motion something else. So let's just see what, what comes next. So the way they see themselves mm, is the seven of swords in reverse. The way others see them or the environment in which they sit is the Empress. Hopes and fears. Okay. And then the final outcome. So the way they see themselves is the Seven of Swords in reverse. And this is all about the entity that has stolen something that they think they're entitled to. They've done it in a sneaky, stealth-like way. And there's an element of regret or remorse as a result of that. Now, we've just, we've been talking about this fellow who has propagandized 
um, and slandered and lost in court and has been, or defamed I think is the correct term, and has been found liable for those types of actions. And that may have been an unexpected turn of events. There's a feeling sorry for oneself that sits directly below this uh, fantasy and illusion card. So I think that what we're getting at the moment is we're, we've got Alex Jones licking his wounds, people like him, kind of thinking about, am I, am I going to be held liable? Am I vulnerable for having done the same thing? The environment in which they sit, and I think this is more so than the way they're viewed by others. Although, I don't know, it could be, it could be a little bit of both, is the Empress. The Empress is all about um, fertility, growth, motherhood, which is a very important kind of element of, um, of an entity that is there, that, that is the first point of contact to trust. So being able to trust a mother type um, entity. It's a dominant female energy. It's a new enterprise. It's really abundant and fertile in nature. Now the media, that, that could be considered the environment and also the way they're viewed. And because it has come up as, there are other powerful abundant cards that could come up, but because the Empress is a particularly, um, it, it's particularly focused on a female entity, especially one of motherhood, it should be a protective, wholesome, um, trustworthy, reliable, nurturing type of energy. And that's the way that it should be viewed, or that's the way it is viewed. And so it's particularly dangerous if it turns out to be this sick, rivalrous, infectious type of um, need for greed um, that is willing to um, insert a lot of pain and infection and, and, and negativity into something to avoid missing out on what they think is theirs. I think it demonstrates that real danger um, that is posed by a sick media that is um, infecting the airways with a lot of um, harmful propaganda. And the fact that it sits directly beneath that sort of truth means the power. I think it, it really is about the generous, um, extraordinary power the, that the media has to play with the truth and with facts. Um, and so we're, we're capturing the, the message of, of the day, I think, with these cards. In, um, in the Hopes and Fears section, we've got the Hanged Man and it's in reverse. And this is about unfinished business. It can also be about stress and illness and, and having it a little bit tough at the moment. I think that, um, I think that what this would indicate is there's been a delay moving forward, really scratching the surface of this and dealing with it as um, definitively. And it looks as though there's more to come. So I think actually what we're going to find here is we're going to find that there's more cases coming out. I think that the that the that the environment or the or that society has reached is getting very close to reaching its limit when it comes to putting up with this blatant disregard for the welfare of people um, in order to make a dollar. And I and actively infecting society with miscommunication so that while they're scrambling around desperate to find out what is going on and you're sending them all on red herrings and on these wild goose chases of conspiracy and things, you're actually just living it up on the money that you've made from that. I think people are beginning to see that for what it is and uh, are beginning to fight back. And that is what appears here. These are a really strong set of cards. The Fool in reverse is about being a fool. This is about being in bad company, taking bad advice, um, and being foolish, basically. And I think that, um, as you can see, some of my beautifully synchronized Fool readings, you can see from the relationship between the upper and lower cards that the cards are really, really listening. And here, this is no exception. This is exactly the way that I see it now. The unexpected turn of events is a backlash on those who have been very stupid, those who have been foolish. There's going to be more of these Alex Jones types, types of libel cases, and people are going to be winning them. And it almost sort of um, makes me want to go and do a crowdfunding exercise 
to be able to put together a legal fund to help people to just go out and and sue these defamatory type of um, organizations that are prospering on the backs of, of people who've been brokenhearted. It's, um, it looks as though their time is coming and they're being recognized for what they are. And this is, this fool is the one that thought that they were accomplishing something very, very clever by making themselves rich on the backs of those who are already hurting. But unexpectedly, it's starting to come back and it looks as though it's going to, um, to come back and haunt them. So there you go. Um, this case against Alex Jones does appear to be the beginning of something. Oh, and by the way, the case, the recent um, outcome has been in Connecticut, in a court in Connecticut, not in California. Every single time I've said it, I can hear that it's the wrong state, but for some reason I can't seem to bring, I couldn't seem to bring myself to say um, Connecticut. I kept saying California. Maybe there's something happening in California as well. I really don't know. But um, this recent um, decision by the judge was actually took place in a court in Connecticut. I am, um, I don't know what it is, but um, I think that there is, there's a moment upon us where this idea of crowdsourcing or crowdfunding to be able to develop a legal fund for victims who have been defamed as part of this disinformation, political disinformation machine that's happening on some of the media um, forums. I'm not sure that it's actually sort of a, a crazy idea. I think um, the thing that actually makes it possible for all of this disinformation and defamation of witnesses and and defamation of victims of crime um, to actually sort of for this to happen is because these media personalities have so much financial backing and the individuals who are being defamed really don't. I don't think I'm in a position to um, be part of this uh, crowdfunding exercise because I think it detracts from the channel and turns it into something that is um, not what it is meant to be. It's more. It's meant to be more of a sort of a, a supportive, emotionally supportive um, um, presence for, for people who, who want to be assured that everything's going to be okay, because I know that in the long run it will be okay. However, I, I do think that there, there may already be crowdfunding exercises taking place for that, but um, I don't know. I think that equalizing the playing field is really important. And it seems as though we're, we've come across a time where people are beginning to fight back against this disinformation machine. And um, they have my support. I, I do think that people should stand up wherever they can. And I wish the victims of Sandy Hook and their families all the best. And I do suspect that this Connecticut case is going to start to snowball um, this disinformation sort of crackdown. It looks from the cards as though it's the beginning of something. So let's just uh, keep an eye on it and see what happens uh, down the line. I'll revisit it every now and then. And I actually am committed to looking at more of these media personalities and sort of keeping an eye on some of the the sentiment and the energy that's going on around um, that disinformation. So I will be tapping in um, regularly from time to time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams. Bye.